I was brought up in a British colony, so it was kind of, you know, a township where we were aloof from the most part of India. I studied in a convent, so convent is like, you know, it's very strict, not like um, go um, as you like in school. Private schools. Very, uh, yeah, here how the private schools are. Mm -hmm. the, uh, so like we had like, uh, the teachers were sisters, nuns, and they were from most all parts of the world. They used to come and teach us, and it used to be like um, very, very disciplined life, but also uh, I would say opposite to conservative. Both my parents were also very open minded. I grew up with two older brothers and the most pampered uh, girl child in the entire family. They had too much trust on me and um, which actually helped me a lot growing up because as they used to trust me, I felt that um, keeping that trust was my main, um, what do you call it? motto? Okay, Dadu. Not okay, your dadu, my dadu. <laughs> okay, yeah. So dadu was a freedom fighter. Yeah. When I was born, I think he, that was his uh, 16th or 17th job. He was working on like he used to. He was a mechanical engineer. So, uh, and uh, what he, I mean, his his father was a doctor, and. He was also from a very disciplined uh, lifestyle from a family uh, and also a very open-minded, broad-minded, your word, broad-minded uh, family he also came from and um, very strict. Mm -hmm. I have never been whacked by my dad or my mom but my dad would show one look and everything would be in place. Talk about Dida. Oh, Dida? Oh. D <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. So, Dida was actually a uh, very interesting character because she did her MBBS. Mm -hmm. She did her MBBS, but she never um, worked because she got married. Mm -hmm. She got married and she had a big responsibility. Mm -hmm taking care of her in-laws, not mother-in-law and father-in-law, but taking care of her brother-in-law and sister-in-law, two sister-in-law. They were all college, yeah, college-going kids. So she had to take care of that family and she never worked. Definitely she wanted to work, but she did not get a chance maybe. Yeah. But she did her um, internship and she did work for a couple of yeah she worked for a couple of places she worked during i think during college or something mm. she was from calcutta university from medical college so she did assist a lot of doctors and all that so that time she did but but then um, my grandfather was a doctor and he had like big faith on her mm -hmm. she knew very good cooking mm -hmm. and yeah so Frankly speaking, uh, till I came to this country, I never had mutton curry outside my mom's mm -hmm. cook. I've never had it because mm -hmm. I never used to trust. That's valid. <laughs> yeah, she's fire cook. Yeah, no, she used to cook that well, even though she was such, I mean, educated person. And uh, till we, oh, my mom. She taught me when uh, my brother was doing her MBA, his MBA. When I was doing my computer science, she was my teacher mm -hmm. and she also did like my entire schooling. I was very dependent, very, very dependent on both my brother and mom. Mm -hmm. So my mom used to like um, sit with me entire night a day before her my exams I have to revise everything so she would sit with me whole night and then next morning she would cook she would feed everyone she would take care of 
the entire household and um, that's how she was my mom, mom was like mom is girl she's, relax yeah mom is <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think when you guys walked in i was on phone with her and if i if she doesn't find me in phone she will call her even if she has a if i'm like in an exam or if i'm like in the class or like in the lab or something she, she'll call me there's like no she'll be, she's a stressed out person but yeah it's valid yeah very stressed out i mean more is now because she's not well yeah. so yeah. because the thing is as you old if you forget things you don't care about it but she's a person she has a memory like what with what you can compare yeah like very strong memory she insane has insane memory insane like i don't know like knowledge like yeah. sometimes when i think about like 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 putting in perspective like let's say i have like an exam or something if i study for that exam like i'll forget the content like immediately after but she still remembers like anything and everything she's learned or studied or anything even at her age and she's like 87 86 like yeah super smart lady so i was a homemaker for almost 17 years after i got married before i was married i was a i was in my peak of my career so after i got married and after i came to this country i i gave off everything because i was not able to balance between uh home and uh work work because uh, the mental i mean i go into a different uh way of maybe balancing i was not able to balance but she was against it that um not working because she didn't wanted me to be a homemaker but i chose that because i mean situation uh, environment whatever you call it um maybe because i was too stressed out because if i go to work what will happen to my kid i would not be able to because there's nobody else at home back home where she would be able to take care or some somebody will be there to take care of her so that's the reason i never wanted to go back to work when my parents were coming here and uh, picture was like oh they will come here so that they can take care of my kid and i can go to work but then the day they started from there i resigned from my company thinking that i've never spend a quality time with my parents so i gave up that uh, gave up that job and then my mom was very furious mm-hmm. <laughs> she didn't wanted that and my dad was saying like okay if one person can feed and keep you in a good shape i mean a good shape in the sense yeah feed you give you shelter food mm. and take care of you by one person earning then i think you should take care of the home front so that was my okay i understood i don't want to work mm. that that's where i decided i don't want to work i want to take care of you instead of going out and working because i have seen when uh, kids of your class they used to tell you and used to come back to me saying that oh you're so lucky you remember yeah do you remember yeah if yeah. i was ever like not feeling well or i just didn't want to go to school i never used to send her in during mm-hmm. elementary school days yeah. yeah and people would be very very jealous because i was able to stay home and they wouldn't so is nice. She, I was also a stressed out kid, so I don't know why you were stressed <laughs> out, but uh, I still don't know why you are stressed out. Everything you're just like your grandmother, that's yeah. what I feel. Yeah, for sure. Everything too much. Yeah. Um, go with the space. Okay. I never wanted to get married. <laughs> uh no, um I always had in mind that where I grew up it was like when i was in my 7th grade my eldest brother first eldest brother he left for his college so after 2 years my second eldest bro- second elder brother also he left for college so i was in 7th grade i think from 7th grade i was like 
okay alone and i felt that my dad was growing old mm-hmm. and uh, all my all my life i used to think that oh okay i have to do my engineering mm-hmm. and i have to take care of my father mm-hmm. and when my, when my father was uh, almost in the retirement age which is not even 58 mm-hmm. that time mm-hmm. he retired at the age of 58 but i used to feel that he's grown old mm-hmm. i have to do my engineering come back and work in this company because that company was a central government company and i will join this company and i'll take care of them. that's that was when i was growing growing up i had only that dream nothing more than that mm-hmm. <laughs> it's true i never wanted to get married and i remember one of the one of my friends mom her mom came and told my mom that she's crazy i said my mom said why no she's saying that she would not let her brothers marry get married and she will also not get married and i was like somewhere around 25 or something yeah, yeah. I, i i used to tell all those things to all my friends and friends parents and all that mm. so they used to think i'm a little crazy yeah and i'm still yeah i know that yeah yeah i got married in 26 26 and i had you when i was 27 hmm. but that was my first i mean baby uh, i mean after i i have never seen any small babies oh because i was the youngest I never handled mm. never touched mm. <laughs> when i was carrying her i had only thing in my mind that my parents love babies mm. only thing i used to call and tell them the moment she's born probably what i'll do is i'll give you a <laughs> chance to have her and you can keep her that's what my feelings was but i don't know once she was born i never said that mm. i was never able to say that staying here it was challenging because first of all what to do during pregnancy that was a big thing for us everybody were like first generation and i think i was the first one to have be ba- i mean have baby in within uh, my friend circle mm-hmm. except neha was already born mm-hmm. and they were in new jersey and i was in new york and new york we had hardly i mean all my my office colleagues or my friend circles from back from india they were here so everybody nobody had any kids so mm-hmm. nobody has had any experience so it was kind of experiment it was big challenge and then my parents were also not willing to i mean my dad was not well so uh, who was going to come and help us while i was pregnant or anything so it was pretty challenging for me country didn't make much of a difference for me because where i came from that time it was like from bangalore bangalore was one of the what do you call it, the most high tech um modern yeah modern town i mean the city so i didn't find much of a difference here other than the climate mm. and toilet tissue paper mm. and kitchen tissue paper okay. that's only was the difference <laughs> new country was not challenging thing is we had very few friends so very few knowledge everything was very limited mm. resources limited. resources were very limited yeah that's all yeah during uh, pregnancy i was like uh, super pampered super pampered you're by the guinea pig huh you were the guinea pig yeah i was the guinea pig uh, pampered by husband as well as pampered by friends and everybody experimenting on me saying okay and i was always like okay i need this i will get it so that's how i was pampered yeah definitely i was very much uh, supported but when she was born i felt little bit uh, jealous mm-hmm. definitely oh, because they like stop caring about you they care yeah, about you. yeah 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 that that Duh. was just that was just uh, maybe in the hospital i felt it mm. 
and after that it was okay. I mean, it was just in the hospital I felt it. You know, all the attention is towards you, and all of a sudden the attention is gone. Mm -hmm. It's it, 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 it makes because I was the youngest of the family, and all of, and everything was on me. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden I see no one is there. <laughs> Everybody is towards the kid. I was in my peak of my career when I was back in India, and um, I was earning and all. And when I came here, I was dependent on my husband, so I used to feel that um, kind of, what do you call it? Mm. I was hesitant on um, spending his money always. That was my criteria, like if I have to do something, then, I mean, like an example I would give you, like uh, I used to love going back to India, meeting my parents. Um, and uh, it used to cost a lot that time, right? Uh, going back to India means some couple of thousand dollars, right? For mm -hmm. tickets only. Mm -hmm. So the rest would be taken care of when I'm there back in India. But going and coming, that would uh, be a lot of money. So what I used to do, I used to take up odd jobs. Odd jobs in the sense I, used, I took jobs a couple of times. I took it in Dow Jones. I took it in Vonage, I took in... Macy's. What? Yeah, I did Macy's also, yeah, yeah, right, Macy's. So I used to work, get that money for my tickets, and that's how I used to manage. But, yeah, I used to feel that after having a career and then coming here and that dependency, uh, financial dependency, that did affect me a lot, yes. Financially, it was, it was a big, big, big challenge for me. Other than that, mentally I was strong enough to take care of her, but uh, financially it was from bottom. I had to start my career, which I left some 17, 18 years back. I had to start again with kids, college kids, when they were like, I had to start with my career from beginning because by the time 17 18 years everything all everything was obsolete right so i had to start from scratch but yeah slowly uh with small steps i did financially i was able to manage taking care of her taking care of my mother she also i had to bring her also because um, my father passed away back in India and I, we never wanted my mom to be alone all by herself because both my elder brothers were in such countries where they didn't they they couldn't take my mom anywhere but I had green card so I took the chance to bring her here so that she doesn't live alone that's what my um, yeah loved my childhood I didn't really I don't really remember much I don't know I kind of just black out sometimes so I don't really remember anything but I do remember um, spending a lot of time with family um, my grandma and grandpa were always here so got a lot of family time as a kid and even now um, like I take care of Diva like 24 7 like beck and call for her so um, lots of family time um, as an athlete, dancer, and everything, like, a very active growing up, um, I used to balance, like, 3,000 things at once, and, like, kind of take that as an example, like, my mom was also an athlete growing up, my grandma was also an athlete growing up, like, everyone had, like, great time management, and, like, used to do, like, a billion things, so I take that, uh, I think it's, like, genetic or something, but took that up, too, I used to do a lot of things, um, I was an only child, not was, I am an only child, um, and sometimes as a kid I would think like, oh, it would be so nice to have like an older brother or a younger brother, like a younger sister, but like looking like back, I'm like very glad that I am an only <laughs> child, because now I don't have to take responsibilities for like other people's actions, so um, I definitely like that part.
um, like my mom mentioned before, like she like grew up very like in a very liberal like environment and stuff. It was the same for me. Um, obviously, my mom and I are very close, so I tell her everything that I do or think or I don't know. She's like attached, like we're attached by the hip, but um, it was always like that. When my parents were getting divorced and everything, like lots of anxiety with that. And um, as like every kid like goes through who like experiences that, um, it was super hard like during middle school and high school to, um, I don't know, focus, obviously like focus on like anything else. But um, I remember like I would get so like anxious for like my math tests. I would literally have to like leave class to like calm down and everything but I then when I looked back at my like transcript from middle school I ended up getting like an A in the class so I don't know why again I was so stressed out but with everything going on it was like probably pretty like you know valid for me to feel that way I remember it just being a super hard time for like everyone um and my relationship with my mom obviously got stronger and we were obviously more open with each other and like discussed a lot of like our mental health and everything so like a lot of taboo like topics in the south asian community are like your parents or like anyone getting separated divorce mental health mental awareness all that stuff is super taboo and like just recently it started like getting into the spotlight but um we were like pretty open from the beginning and um that definitely made us stronger and you know it's like kind of like you know my mom was here with me the whole time so you know i got to spend more time and obviously work on like our relationship versus like my dad who obviously moved away and um that definitely hampered but like you know it is what it is and you know i got a parent who was both like my mom and my dad so i'd say it, it's fine it, it definitely made me and my mom stronger both together and individually I grew up super independent, um, very like equal to what the boys or like the boys or the men in society, whatever they do, um, whether it comes to mentally, physically, financially, like whatever it is, like I think I'm definitely up to par. So my mom did a good job of instilling that in me. Both qualities of what like, stereoty like stereotypical men or stereotypical women do. So I think that made me become super independent and like realize that gender roles really don't make any sense when you can provide yourself what is missing from your so-called gender role. I mean, I've had a lot of, not a lot, but like definitely have gone through um, race, like experience racism and all that stuff. I mean, as a lot of like Indian kids or like any colored person can go through. Um, growing up, like, a lot of, like, what is it called, not partiality, like, uh, bi biased in, like, sports, or, like, I was in gymnastics, I don't know why, I, <laughs> I was really good, but, um, they, they were, like, I don't know, uh, just not very yeah, fair. I, I used to try to be in every place for her, just so that she doesn't get that partiality or biased by the teacher or by the instructor or anywhere but still like uh, you can't change them right yeah. so there is I mean in gymnastics she had that in tennis she had that and in dance which is like a big yeah. part of like who I am um I experienced that like I did I went to that school for 10 plus years 10 years or so um never really felt comfortable being there because it was like majority not Indian kids or like majority just like I was the minority uh, by far and for more than 10 years I felt that and like, that they, I realized only this year yeah. I never knew about it I didn't know because I thought like she's very happy I mean like dance because that was a big challenge financial challenge for me yeah sending you to that school yeah like dance was a big thing i mean like still is a big thing and it's like a big part of who i am but um that school was not like the best for me even though like you know that's where like i started as a dancer um i felt really left out and just felt like they were very like 
I don't know, they were very biased with other people and mainly felt that because I was Indian or brown or whatever. But um, I've definitely like experienced colorism on like different levels. Like sometimes it's like an auntie being like, yo, why are you so like dark or like, you know, like I would like when I was in tennis, I was out in the like in the sun the whole day. I would get not an Indian auntie, your mom, your grandmother like, also you know, does that. Even, even in the family, like, you know, it's just kind of just comes up. And, you know, I would get super tan and like, you know, it's, it, it is what it is. Like, I can't do anything about that. And, you know... <laughs> your grandmother did never wanted you to go back to the tennis. To place. tennis because I was so, so tan. <laughs> tan for the rest of the year. <laughs> yeah, and even when I did marching band, I was oh. like... I would spend like 10 plus hours in the day, like out in the daylight. And I was super duper tan. And even like, you know, with friends and stuff too, it's like, you know, like... Sometimes there's like comments here and there, but you know... I think we all experience it, but I'm not really sure how anyone can change that. Um. Short. Color. Oh, yeah. Uh, what is? Pimples. Oh, my God. Stop. Not even about that. <laughs> yeah. You know, that is from Indian, I mean, body shaming. That's what yeah. it is called, body shaming. Body Here shaming it's called. A sh it's a, a, without Indian people, without their consciousness, they do that because... They grew up like that. Yeah, there's because, like no filter on their side. Yes, out of concern they do it, but it's not. But the kids from here or kids from anyone, I mean, here who grew up here, they they cannot take it. Yeah. But in India, we grew up, any Tom, Dick and Harry will come and tell you, oh, why don't you do something with your face? Your face has so yeah. much of scars. Or you are so fat. You are so um, short or something you can't do anything but like a, you can't help but with they would shaming. always give your opinion or go give your statement give their statement which is very much unnecessary yeah but they don't realize it yeah i mean i remember i mean before even you became a teenager i remember i used to out of concern if you remember to christine i i did tell and you were telling me that mom why are you telling because i didn't know that yeah. It's offending. It's a, it's it's a, a body, body shaming. I, I didn't yeah. know that. Now I don't do it with any kids or anybody. I don't do it. It's a, it's a learning curve because when, like in India, it's like, like referring back to what she said, like they don't really grow up like that. Like not sensitivity, but like they don't know that filter. Of you, you just don't, like you can't do anything about it. There's no point of you saying anything or like, that. You it's just none of your business. So I think it's a learning curve when they come here, like first gen parents and... Um, and the kids when they go back to India, I literally have to tell every person, she had pimples, right? Once uh, when you were in school or yeah, college? Yeah, yeah. A lot. And I had to literally tell them when, before she comes, like I would tell individual person that please do not talk about this to her. She gets offended and their kids doesn't like it. But even after yeah. telling them, yes, I used to tell them, even after telling them, they would still come up, come yeah, up to crazy. you. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> it, it, it's out of concern. Some people are out of concern. Some people out of, uh, I mean, not cuckoo in their head or anything, no, but so. it's actually... Uh, it comes out. That's all. I mean, maybe I used, yeah. I used but to do it. Yeah, I used to. But you learned. It. I learned it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like if I'm not busy all the time, I'm not productive, and um, I think it it just keeps me sane. Like I have a lot of hobbies, and I've had a lot of like done a lot of things growing up, and I've like stuck to it, and I feel like it's my responsibility and. Um, it's my responsibility if I like want to stay sane, like to continue doing that, and um, I I think I just genuinely like it. Um, I like staying busy because if I if I'm not busy, I'm not doing anything, and if I'm not doing anything, then I'm sleeping. Yeah, most <laughs> of the time I'm sleeping if I'm not doing anything. Yeah, it's I. Uh, I feel like keeping busy. I feel that sane. she takes it as a responsibility, maybe. That is the reason she does that. Uh, most of the things like 
other than doing your masters doing your um, studies the rest of the things now what you're doing i think you're doing out of responsibility yeah like we're like full-time caregivers for my grandma even though she's at a nursing home we're like always there always running around for her doing everything so we're so we're always busy with that and it takes up majority of our time but even like balancing our social and personal lives is such a big thing and it just keeps us so busy mm -hmm. i think it's just very necessary if we want to stay sane that like we have to just keep do to, everything keep doing what we're doing mm -hmm. and like doing a socializing other also yeah my grandpa was a mechanical engineer and fun fact he actually like what made the laundry like the laundry machine that like everyone uses washing machine washing machine like he invented that but we couldn't get patent. a pat we couldn't get a patent for him so patent it's a patent ma. okay okay <laughs> it's a um we couldn't get that for him so obviously like but yeah he's my uncle and my grandpa are huge like engineers they love huge problem solvers um they love to build things with their own hands um and i was actually not even thinking about engineering when i graduated high school um i was thinking about business um but i think after talking my mom's colleague helped me like pick biomedical engineering too because he talked about how engineer after doing engineering you can actually like, go into anything you want as an engineer so i thought like oh maybe i'll just suffer through engineering school for four more years and see what else i want to do after but then like i also wanted to do like i want to go into med school so i thought like oh like engineering med school like let's i'll like come to terms with like biomedical engineering and now like i, I like kind of love it like it's it's super cool um i think i'm very excited for after i graduate to get out into the world but we'll see how that goes i think a big thing i've seen or like would like to implement into my love life is friendship and um i think if you can be super good friends with someone you can stay with them for the rest of your life um if you know if they bring out your true self if you can be yourself around them so as long as you can trust them they're a good person i think that's just what matters and like seeing everyone grow up and just like friends family anyone knowing that there is a friendship underneath everything and like just mutual respect and everything i i think that's definitely key and something i would definitely like hope for in the future i would love to be a mom i always joke around with my grandma that like i don't know how i'm gonna become a mom like i don't know like the middle factor but like i definitely want to become the mom how many people how oh many yeah people? i want to make like a football team like i want to have a bunch of kids i think growing up as an only child like i didn't like i'm used to like being the only person but um center of attraction yeah center of attention and everything but um i think if i have a lot of kids that would be a new experience for me some a new challenge um tell that your mom wants it yeah my mom also wants a lot of grandchildren but <laughs> i think yeah i definitely i would love to be a girl mom because i've seen like how awesome that is so um yeah, I, I would love to be a mom. <laughs> I definitely want to get her house. That's a big thing. And I think um, hoping that she could depend on me for finance. I think that's because we like struggled with that a lot. Not struggled a lot, but like we did struggle when we initially like when my parents got separated. That was a big thing for us and like a big worry and like source of anxiety um i think providing that and just being at ease and for her to be at ease that like everything's taken care of like you don't have to worry about anything just like let her chill for once and not have her doing a million things too i think um that's like that would be the biggest yeah. thing 50 percent of a salary is coming to me yeah right? yeah, yeah 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 sure sure sure, sure. <laughs> no but um 
just providing like support with mentally and everything because you know our parents are getting older they are becoming a little more crazier now so i think um being just being there for them and just always being open to talk to them is, is a big thing i think i think we're a great example for like a lot of women out there because like not to like toot our own horn but like I, I think a lot of women put in this place as like where my mom has been a lot of them can't really do that in the south asian community from what i've seen and experienced um it's not an easy thing to do for anyone whether it's a woman or a man but um i think being a south asian mom of a only child having only her mother here to support her i think um, she's a great example of like a strong woman and um, how you can actually like do it all sometimes you know you might go crazy here and there but like you know there's always ups and downs no matter what the problem is but i think my mom and my grandma are a huge example to feminists and like can do everything a man can do or vice versa or just be the provider and the homemaker and everything all together in one so yeah i think i think we disagree and like fight a lot um i, I think it always fe sometimes seems like she's not listening to me when i'm like trying to explain her something or like telling her how I feel yeah I mean but I think at the end of the day we just both are very open to conversation and just opening to hear the other person out it, even like with my dida it's it goes the same way me to dida dida to me ma to dida dida to ma like everybody has a say yeah everybody has a say and has their own opinion and everyone always hears the other person out no matter whether we disagree or fight there's always fighting in this house like all the time this house is never quiet it's very quiet because you guys are here but <laughs> um, but there's always yelling there's always fighting but i think that's what's good about us is that like whatever we feel we kind of just say there's no like um filter filter between us it's like if i feel a certain way or if i feel like i need to get this out like i'll, I'll get it out and it goes for her too and um, sometimes it can be frustrating um, at points because it seems like maybe she's not listening to like what I'm trying to say or trying to convey to her. But um, I think we always just come back. Yeah, most of the time it is like uh, basically when I don't hear you or that is blocked in my mind that whatever you're saying is not in my encyclopedia I would say because um, I didn't grow up like that so I don't know what you're saying what you're trying to say sometimes so those things doesn't go inside my inside me you know that's the reason where I you there's a little bit of disconnect from like yeah but certain... nowadays I can relate some I mean, yeah. because you are open, you explain it to me. So that's yeah. the. But when you were growing up, and uh, the challenges which you faced, now you are opening up and telling me that this is what happened back in school. I mean, like in like the dance thing. I never knew it that you had so much problems or so much uh, racism or whatever you call it. You had it in your school, but you never said that to me because I thought that. Oh, you're good you're fine because I was always shown that you're fine because I used to be there always uh, right in front of you but never noticed that you were neglected or you were doing uh, anything mm -hmm. so most of the things which I you feel that I have not heard you that that time means that I don't understand that part of mm -hmm. I don't understand that part so now, uh, after you turned 18 or probably after you started going to high school, I think um, you started explaining me what 
the culture is cultural uh, yeah. mostly it would be the culture wise which i don't understand which i sh- should like how you say that about the therapies right yeah which i still don't yeah like it was a it was a big thing about like with my anxiety and stuff like the discussion of therapy and uh all these other like tr- treatments yeah like different ways to help my anxiety um like i would bring that up from like middle school or high school or you know even now like with so much like stress with school or like you know whether it just be like just too much going on at the same time but um like therapy was always a discussion for us and sometimes like she maybe she wouldn't understand what the point of therapy is or like how she can replace therapy or like like for me just be like a listening ear or whatever but um i think you know as we've both gotten older and realized like Mature what yeah are. what therapy can do or just an example of therapy but um what it can do or like how we can like work together to solve the problem instead of working against each other um and then going for parties oh yeah i don't agree but still i let her go yeah there i mean like there's a lot of like like i don't know being like the only child like the only person here that it's like obviously with her um there's a i'm sure she feels a lot of like restraint from like letting me go anywhere like I want to but like i've never felt that like i feel like i was always able to do whatever i want to or like i got whatever i wanted or did whatever i wanted to do and i'm sure she feels like some type of like internal struggle with that but um I think we've both come to terms that like we like trust each other, we hear each other out on like what we feel and I think yeah, we just, just challenges are still there going on. Yeah, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, same thing with me also. I mean, with my mother. Um she comes from another generation, so I have a different kind of challenges. Like for her, she always the challenge with me uh parenting her um my mother always sat with me while i was studying that i told you right that it made me dependent i was very dependent on my both my brothers and my mom because i wanted during exams i wanted her to be sitting next to me when i'm doing revise revisions or when i'm writing something or anything i would need her to sit next to me beside her beside me or my brothers or my dad anybody i want it i always so i make sure that i don't want to um create that dependency inside you that's the reason i was i never from kindergarten i've never except for the first grade back in india where you studied hindi that's the time i guided you other than that i've never sit with her while she's doing her homework or while she's doing her studies it is her responsibility that she will learn that she has to do that for the next day she has to submit it if she doesn't have that responsibility she would never learn it so my mother had always a challenge and till today she still tells me that you did not sit with her and i told her that i don't want to create that dependency that's the reason i don't sit with her i'm literally an adult <laughs> what does she mean <laughs> so she doesn't let me allow you to go to after evening because our rule was lights off you should be in yes. even if you're an adult i got married when i got married in 26 or 25 25 I used to go out with your baba before marriage right so I mean I was like I have to make phone calls that I am here I am here I am there so I have to make a phone call and tell them that what my location is mm-hmm. so hey nothing's changed when I'm out like at 3 o'clock in the morning I will text her I am at this bar I am going here I am going there I'm coming back home at 5 a.m. she knows where i am what i'm doing so we're very good in the sense of communication yeah so that's the reason i mean i'm telling you that I, she doesn't let me so there is a conflict between me and her uh parenting right mm. like why you why do you leave her why do you allow her 
So I'm just cool. That's why. Like it's just. And then she next day she will ask her, where did you go? What all did you do? Everything she would she would like to know from you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's the ultimatum. Uh, like she says something to us. I think we do, right? Yeah, I think I think we do for uh, my grandma. Um, like her opinion or whatever she says. That matters like, a lot. And they'll be all yeah. like till we, now, till we, today. Yeah, even the even she's there in uh, assisted care, but she's ruling. Yeah, she whatever she says, like that's what goes. Like you know we. We understand where she comes from, and she's obviously she's a very smart lady. She's very capable, um, and we both know that. And she's very experienced, so we always know that, like whatever she says, it there's definitely a reason for her saying that. So that's why it's kind of like end all be all with her opinion. So I think putting her on a pedestal. I mean, I think we definitely do that. Um, for my mom, I think. For sure, like I putting her on a pedestal, like giving her that respect or like love or like kindness that like like my mom would deserve, like anything in the world, like yeah, I I would do that. But um, I think I just view her as like you know like if like a friend, like you know. I think we kind of share that relationship instead of like mom and daughter. It's kind of just like, like I always say like when people talk about like, oh yeah, I'm living with like my roommate or like this and that. Like I'll be like, oh yeah, my roommate's like crazy. Like, you know, she's, she's insane. She's always trying to find out where I'm going and everything. But like, I think I always put her at my level and like, it's very like, um, similar to how she grew up, like very equal in her family. Her say was also very equal. So I think kind of just like buddies, but I definitely put her on a pedestal. Like I'd love to, like, I mean, I do, but yeah. My mother, I mean, I'm very emotional. I'm very, very emotional. And um, because she's not living with us and I feel guilty. I really feel guilty that she's not, she's not living with us. And I feel that it's uh, my responsibility that she should be living with us so that she has a house. Not living with somebody else. It's just that only reason why I'm not keeping her home is just because of snow, right? Valid, yeah. It's, yeah, we both work, like we're both, we yeah. never like can give her the time or anything. Even if we get uh, if even if we get uh, assisted uh, care, but she goes for dialysis for three days, right? Sometimes four days, every alternate days. So the challenge is that if she's living with us and if it snows, who's going to clean the snow to take her to dialysis on snow those days? Huh? No, I'm Bolchi. I mean, my shate emotionally attached at she are make many a kind of rakte parchina bole. I mean, I think I went out of track, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's okay. Sure, okay. No, as I grow up, I'm like understanding to put myself in her shoes, and the more I do, the more I think of how she did not go insane. <laughs> um, uh, like th thinking from that perspective like nowadays like not nowadays for a couple of years now I think like oh if I had a child or if I had a daughter like how would I feel if I was doing what I was doing like would I be super anxious would I be super like where are you what are you doing or like why are you doing this or just very um you know just thinking about that all the time and like it totally justifies how our moms feel uh, or any of our how our parents feel. About. Why was never a question? I think. It, I think we kind of nailed it. <laughs> yeah. No, because if if her father was around, then probably I would take a back seat, right? Yeah. yeah. I would have taken a back seat, and uh, maybe um, he would have he would have taken everything, all the decisions and stuff. All the decisions, not all the decisions of about you, but financially whatever is required 
I mean, most of the things he would he would drive, and um, I I don't think we've. I mean, like for me, it's a little different. Like, I don't. I would hope that I didn't do anything that I would regret in like um, treating my mom because I feel like I can understand where she's coming from, especially like now being grown and um, after like in high school and college and like now in my early 20s I feel like I kind of get where she's coming from and why she does what she does so I think that definitely took time to understand but I would hope that I would never regret treating my mom badly or just treat her badly anyways you dare not to yeah <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, do you... It's <laughs> good, it's good. Okay, well, it's not. Okay, next. No, no, I don't know what to do. I mean, I don't know what to do in my life. I don't know what to do in my life. I don't know what to do. Okay, I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you. Okay, 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 I'm going to call you. Okay. What? Eat it. You didn't eat it. No, she came an hour ago. It's what? 6... No, it's 7.45. It's 7.45. Okay, let's keep it. Let's keep it. Okay, I'm going to call it. Let's go. Bye. 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 You are part of me. Remember. Yes. I own you. Um, you literally can't say that. I own you. Yes. No, Priyanka will get you cancelled. <laughs> Don't say that.